Now let's talk about grain growth. So grain growth occurs as we finally reach that last stage of the heat treatment. All of our big grains disappear. They were eaten by these random oriented, um, not cold work, um, small grains. However, small grains, very, very small grains, will eventually disappear. Why is that happening? It's because some of their atoms are going to larger grains that are nearby. And these larger grains are getting bigger and bigger. You're going, wait a second, why are these grains growing? Well, they're not cold worked. They're you know, more uniformly shaped. And so they're not as easy to break apart to form more small grains. And also at this point, we have just so much more motion that things are a bit different than they were beforehand. Okay, with that in mind, we're going to have small grains that shrink and large grains that are going to continue to grow. So we're going to keep on growing until we have these very, very large grains. So this is after eight seconds at 580 degrees Celsius. This is after 15 minutes. You can see that there's a lot less grains now because they've all joined together. They've joined together because we have that ability, that ability to move. And so the atoms are moving in, forming more ordered structures. Now, just like everything else has influence properties, grain size also influence properties. Metals having small grains are usually strong and tough at low temperatures. Metals having large grains have good creep resistance at relatively high temperatures. Creep is when something's going to start deforming even if we haven't increased the stress. So if we go to high temperature, even if a force normally wouldn't cause any strain, at higher temperatures, this force will begin to cause strain. It'll just begin to stretch. And that's called creep. Now there is an empirical relationship on the average grain size and the heat treatment time. Now there are some numbers you don't necessarily know here. This exponent is normally two, but it is something you have to find from the particular case you're looking at, the particular metal, the particular purity. And there's also a material constant, which depends on temperature. However, it's independent of time. So the constant we're going to change with temperature. So this is our initial average grain diameter before heat treatment, and that will change based on this constant and the amount of time at that temperature. And so for that, we can see how much bigger they've gotten over time. So let's look at this again, but look at what has happened to our particular materials. So we have our cold worked grains right here. Okay, these are our cold worked grains but they've been recovered. What I mean by recovered means that all the dislocations that were inside of them are gone. There's no more dislocations there. But then as we move into this recrystallization temperature, you can see that we begin to eat away at our large cold worked grains. And instead they begin to get cut into pieces and turned into a bunch of more uniformly sized small grains. And those grains, as we reach the grain growth section, will begin to grow into larger and larger grains. Okay, larger and larger grains. So that's it for this time. Thank you for listening. Um, and I'll just say this, we will be coming back to this whole process of heat treating with metals later on in this semester everything gets connected. You're going to see that so many times. So please pay attention to this. Pay attention to the processes that happen there. The recovery, the recrystallization, and then grain growth. That's important. Um, and also how cold working affects these properties. Remember that. So thank you for listening. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.